So my journey to satisfaction and contentment with work and life started with a question that my mother asked me many years ago. You see, I just finished school, college, and I got my first job out of school, and I went to my first day of work at my first job. And I came home, and my mother met me coming up the stairs to the house. And she looked me in the eye, and she said, so, do you think you can do that for 40 years? That kind of made me reel a little bit and think about where was satisfaction really going to come from. So my road, my journey, uh, I'm not done yet, uh, but it's been a little bumpy. I've made some wrong decisions, uh, but I want to share with you a couple of the things I've learned so far, and maybe that'll be helpful to you. So there are four lessons I've learned so far, and I'll share those with you. The first, I found that I need to find work that's extremely challenging, that an objective where the outcome is in doubt, when you achieve it, there's a lot more satisfaction. So for me, when my wife and I moved to Bozeman almost 20 years ago, we had this crazy idea that we were going to start a global technology business in a rural place like Montana. And I will tell you, a lot of people told us it was impossible. They said, there's no venture capital here, you don't have world-class talent, there's no airline service, and the internet capability is really bad. And I'm glad that we didn't listen. Uh, we started, my wife and I, in an extra bedroom of our home, and over 15 years we grew into the largest commercial employer in Bozeman, where we paid an average wage of $86,000 a year, which was a tremendous impact on the economy. In total, over that 15-year period, just through the wages we brought into the valley here, we created about $5 billion of economic value, if you include the wages and the ripple effect from those wages. So lesson number one, if you want satisfaction in work, is to find really big, hairy problems that you can work on. Uh, I'd say for me, there's an awful lot of satisfaction in accomplishing something that other people think is impossible. Lesson number two, you have to be very sensitive to your own skills. I believe that each one of us is endowed with unique skills by our creator. And we've got to find a way to apply those in the most useful way. I personally am an engineer, and I like to work and mentor and coach people. I find that very rewarding and well-matched with my skills. Uh, I'm also a big idea guy. So detail I find very frustrating. And I'll say, as the company grew, and I found myself in more and more meetings and looking at more spreadsheets, uh, I was less happy. In fact, I came to really hate my job. I remember I was, uh, at one point, we had a company meeting, and I got up and I said to the company, uh, if I had to look at one more budget spreadsheet, I was going to throw up. I didn't throw up because I realigned my job. And I found a way uh, to uh, promote a very talented person inside the business into a uh, uh, lead operations role so I could get out on the road. And for years on end, I visited 200 to 250 customers a year all over the world. It was really hard work because in large part because I was away from my family that much with all the travel. Uh, but I'll have to say it was very satisfying. And the lesson I learned there was that by matching the work I was doing with my skills, I could be much more satisfied. And I would encourage you to do the same and taking a look at your own skills and finding out what's next. That's lesson number two. Number three uh, is probably the most important. I learned that the purpose of work is to serve other people. So this was really surprising because at the end of the day, my satisfaction really has nothing to do with me at all. It has to do with how we serve other people. I'll give you an example. And I think that every single job has a noble purpose in serving others. And if you can understand how your work serves others, you will be much more satisfied. I'll give you an example. This building has cleaning staff that comes in. Our office had cleaning staff that came in. And people would say, well, cleaning, that's a, that's a menial job. Well, that really fails to recognize the vital role they have in serving others. If in an office building, no one came in and emptied the waste paper baskets, and no one else did that, each office would fill up with trash, and no one would be able to get their work done. So at the end of the day, 
The purpose of the cleaning staff is not to clean the offices. It's to provide a product productive work environment for everybody that's in that organization, and they are vital to the success of that organization. Every job worth doing has a noble purpose in serving others. Carpenters don't pound nails. They build homes for people. Chefs don't cook meals. They nourish and entertain people. And where would we be if we didn't have baristas getting us going in the morning with our coffee, right? Vital. So that's lesson three. Understand the noble purpose in your work and how it serves others. And then the last lesson, fourth lesson, is really a corollary to lesson three. And that is that we have choices. I would encourage you to pick work that has the, the best chance, the highest noble purpose in serving others. I'm at a crossroads in my career, and I've spent the last year thinking about what's next. Uh, and I've concluded that one of the best things I can do is work on improving the average wage in the state of Montana. Montana's 49th in the country in wage scale, just ahead of Mississippi. And uh, I've, over the last year, I've built a business plan that focuses on creating more jobs in industries that create high wages here in the state through uh, entrepreneurship and preparing our young for those jobs in those industries. And I'm excited about that because it's a big, hairy problem, nearly intractable, so the, the outcome is in doubt. Uh, it's a good match for my skills and my experience, and I think it has a huge potential to serve a lot of people and improve the lives. So those are my four lessons. If you want to, just as I have done in my career so far, um, find satisfaction and contentment, I would encourage you to understand the, uh, the, the skills that you have, the, um, the noble purpose and how you serve others, uh, pick work that has the highest noble purpose, and find challenges at the very edge of your ability. I firmly believe that every one of you, myself included, have been created for some noble purpose in serving others. I encourage you to find your noble purpose and pursue it with passion. Thank you.